access your free language gifts right now before they expire. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the Love Conversation Cheat Sheet. Do you know how to ask someone out in your target language? With this new cheat sheet, you'll master tons of romantic phrases, just in time for Valentine's Day. Download it for free right now. Second, the 400 Everyday Phrases for Beginners eBook. This bonus eBook will teach you over 400 words and phrases related to daily activities, like waking up, making breakfast, going to work or school, and much more. Third, can you talk about containers in your target language? Learn how to say box, bottle, bin, and much more with this quick vocabulary bonus. Fourth, must know Valentine's Day vocabulary. Can you talk about Valentine's Day in your target language? You'll be able to with this quick one minute vocabulary lesson. Fifth, the top 15 encouraging phrases. Want to be able to say positive phrases like believe in yourself and don't give up? Then get this bonus phrase lesson. Sixth, free audiobooks. Unlock our huge library of language learning audiobooks. Save them to any device and listen and learn. They're yours to keep forever. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, take the 12 month challenge and get 12 months of premium or premium plus at up to 45% off. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the description below. Download them right now before they expire. Hi guys, welcome to JapanesePod101.com. This is Hiroka. So today I'm going to talk about Anata wa is rude or not? Have you ever heard Anata wa before? Basically, Anata wa means you. However, we don't use this so often. For example, it reminds me of a drama. So there is a husband and a wife, wife、um, called husband, Anata. I'll give you an example. Ne, Anata. Soro soro ryoko ni tsurete te kureru wa yo ne. Ya, isogashi in da yo ne. Gobe. Like this. Now, like husband and wife, like you in usual, they call like the, their name each. So, Anata is not often used, but sometimes in the drama. And also, like I'll explain. So, when we use this and then To whom we should use. So, first, when Japanese people use anata, wa, it means like to point out someone besides you. And also, so to whom you should use this phrase to the same age or younger than you. Please don't use this phrase to. Um, the older people, it's very rude.、Uh, and then surprisingly, you should not use this even though inside of your family. You know, like we have, or I think your culture h a v e like it. We should respect for the older people. So we do not use this、uh, phrase to the older people, even though my family. And then I'll explain you like a bad situation. You should not use this phrase like when you are in your business. So, for example, あなたもこのプロジェクトを企画してたんですね。失礼なやつ。Like this. So, this is a situation like the woman is a Kato kun's boss, and the Kato kun is younger than boss. 
Kotokun should not use anata wa to the boss, right? Because he is younger than the boss. And also, you should not use this phrase、uh, in business emails. It's also very rude if you are、uh, called uh, like uh, uh, receivers, like anata wa. We usually、uh, call、uh, someone、uh, in their name, by their name. Okay, so let's summarize. First, you can use anata wa to a people who is the same age or younger than you. However, we don't use this phrase not so much in a daily life. It's Uh, just in a drama, or it's a、uh, like old way, so and you should not use this phrase to、uh, older people, it's very rude, even though、uh, within the family, of course, in the business, and then business emails. Okay, so.、Um, You can be、uh, the master of Anatawa today, so you can tell now like, when it's,、uh, fr- this phrase is rude or not. Okay, guys,、um, thank you for watching this video.、Um, if you want to know、uh, more about、uh, Japanese phrases or you would like to talk with your Japanese native speakers, please get the free account from JapanesePart11.com. And then you can、uh, know a much a bunch of the like、uh, Japanese phrases or like a more Japanese videos. So please don't forget to check it us out. Thank you very much, guys. Bye bye. This is Ben Lee, and he's on the train. A fellow passenger drops his wallet as he exits the train. Ben picks up the wallet and chases after the man. He calls to the man by saying, Excuse me. すみません Listen to the following three short dialogues between Ben and the man. すみませんはい Ben hands the man the wallet. ありがとうございますどういたしまして Ben turns to board the train, but the doors shut. すみません大丈夫です Once more with the English translation. すみません Excuse me. はい Yes. Ben hands the man the wallet. ありがとうございます。Thank you. どういたしまして。You're welcome. Ben turns to ride the train, but the door's shut. The man apologizes. すみません。I'm sorry. 大丈夫です。It's alright. Let's take a closer look at these three conversations. First, do you remember how Ben Lee says, Excuse me? すみません In this context, すみません is used to get someone's attention and translates as, Excuse me. すみません,すみません This expression can also be a mild apology and even a very polite thank you. Its most fundamental and perhaps most frequent use, though, is when you want to get someone's attention. In this case, Ben wants to get the attention of the person he is chasing after. Remember this expression. You'll use it later in the lesson. Do you remember how the passenger acknowledges Ben by saying, Yes? はい、はい。Yes. はい
はい。This expression is often used in response to すみません。The second part of the conversation takes place after Ben returns the passenger's wallet. Do you remember how the passenger politely says, Thank you? ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。Thank you. ありがとうございます。This expression has two parts. First, ありがとう。which means something like gratitude. ありがとう。ありがとう。ありがとう。Originally comes from the phrase ありがたし。which literally means hard to exist. Or rarely exists. It came to mean gratitude because you should appreciate something that rarely happens to you. The second part is gozaimasu, a polite way to say I have or there exists. Gozaimasu. Gozaimasu. Together, arigatou gozaimasu means something like. Gratitude there exists, but translates as thank you. In more informal situations, you can drop the and just say thank you. Do you remember how Ben says, You're welcome? どういたしまして。どういたしまして。You're welcome. どういたしまして。どういたしまして。means something like, What did I do for you? And it implies that the speaker didn't do anything, so there's no need for gratitude. First is, どう。meaning how or what. どう。Second is, いたしまして meaning something like, I did in the context. いたしましていたしましてい is a form of the humble verb, いたす meaning to do. いたす Together, どういたしまして You're welcome. どういたしまして This is the appropriate response to ありがとうございます。After the train doors shut and Ben misses his train, do you remember how the passenger apologizes to Ben by saying, I'm sorry? すみません。In this context, すみません。means, I'm sorry. すみません。The passenger feels responsible for Ben missing his train and is apologizing. So here, すみません means I'm sorry, while in the first dialogue, すみません means excuse me, as Ben is trying to get the passenger's attention. The meaning of すみません depends on the context. Do you remember how Ben replies, It's all right. The first part is All right. Next is this. In this case, it's like the am in I am. Des. Des. Together. Daijobu des. This literally means, I am all right, but it translates as, it's all right. This is a common phrase used to express that things are all right, referring to situations and physical well being. Do you remember how Ben says, You're welcome? どういたしまして
This expression is often preceded by ie, meaning no. I, I, e, I, e. Together, the full expression is いいえ、どういたしまして。No, what did I do for you? But translates as, you're welcome. いいえ、どういたしまして。Sometimes you might hear only the first part of this expression. いいえ、without, どういたしまして。In this case, the どういたしまして is inferred from context, so it is omitted. Let's look at the expressions once more. Listen and repeat or speak along. Pay attention to the body language. すみませんすみませんはいはいありがとうございますありがとうございます。どういたしまして。どういたしまして。すみません。すみません。大丈夫です。大丈夫です。Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. Then, repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say, excuse me? すみませんすみません And how to say, yes? はい。はい。When using polite Japanese, do you remember how to say thank you? ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。And how to say you're welcome? どういたしまして。どういたしまして。Do you remember how to say I'm sorry? すみません。すみません。And how to say it's alright? Let's practice. Imagine you're Karen Lee and you receive a popular Japanese candy from your Japanese teacher. Say thank you. Ready? どういたしまして。Listen again and repeat. ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。Let's try another. Imagine you are Mark Lee and a passenger bumps into you. Respond by saying, It's all right. Ready? すみません。大丈夫です。Listen again and repeat. 大丈夫です。大丈夫です。Let's try one more. Imagine you're Mark Lee and you see a man drop his wallet. Get his attention. Ready?
すみませんはい Listen again and repeat すみません,すみません This is the end of this lesson. Remember, these can do lessons are about learning practical language skills. What's next? Show us what you can do. When you're ready, take your assessment. You can take it again and again, so try anytime you like. Our teachers will assess it and give you your results. Now you know how to use essential social expressions in Japanese. That's all there is to it. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. Hi everyone, welcome to Kanji Time. Today we are going to learn N3 Kanji. If you want to do the quiz first, please go to these times. Ikoze! This kanji means fate, command, destiny, life, a point. The own reading for this kanji is mei, myo, like in meirei. Meaning order or command. Kyotsuke! Maie, susume! And the kun reading is inochi, like in inochi ni kakawaru, which means to be a matter of life or death, crucial. Mo, mikaka mo nani mo tabete inai. Kyoju ni mitsuke nakte wa inochi ni kakawaru. This kanji means harmony, Japanese style, peace, soften, Japan. The own reading for this kanji is wa, o, like in heiwa, meaning peace. Peace. And the kun reading is yawa, nago, like in koi wo yawaragiru, which means soften one's voice. Konna koi yori mo konna koi no hoga yasashiku kikoiru yo ne. This kanji means make a deal, selling, dealing in, trade, business. The own reading for this kanji is show, as in shohin, which means goods, merchandise. And the kun reading is akina, like in toki wo akinau, which means dealing in ceramics. This kanji means happy, rejoice, take pleasure in. The own reading for this kanji is ki. Which is like in kigeki, meaning comedy. And the kun reading is yoroko, like in o yorokobi suru. Meaning to crow over, be extremely delighted. Akogare no ano shito to akushi o shite o yorokobi suru. This kanji means times, round, game, revolve, counter for occurrences. The on reading for this kanji is kai, like in kaito suru, meaning to answer or to reply. And the kun reading is mawa, like in me ga mawaru, meaning to get dizzy. Quiz time! Say the reading of the following kanji. Kaito suru. Shohin. Inochi ni kakawaru. Heiwa. O yorokobi suru. Now say the meaning of the following words. Toki wo akinau. Deal in ceramics. Koi wo yawaragiru. Soften one's voice. Kigeki. Comedy. Meirei. 
order, command. 目が回る。to get dizzy. That's all for today. みんなが見てくれて、それが勉強になったらとても嬉しいです。大喜びです。それでは、see you next time. Bye bye. Hi everyone, welcome to Kanji time. 今日は N4 漢字をレビューしましょう。Let's review N4 kanji today. Let's go! If you want to do the quiz first, please go to these times. This kanji means younger brother, faithful service to elders. The only reading for this kanji is tei, dai. Like in tei mai, which means younger siblings. And the kun reading is ototo, as in ototo. Which means younger brother. This kanji means weak. The on reading for this kanji is jack, as in jaku ten, meaning weak point. And the kun reading is yowa, as in yowai, meaning weak. This kanji means strong. The on readings are kyo or go. Like in, 勉強 meaning study. Kun readings are 強 or 死 Like in, 強い meaning strong. This kanji means weight, depend on. The on reading for this kanji is 体 Like in, 期待 which means expectation. 期待する expectation. And the kun reading is ma, like in machi awase, which means appointment. This kanji means heart, mind, spirit. The on reading for this kanji is shin, as in chu shin, which means center, sekai no chu shin, center of the world. And the kun reading is kokoro, as in kokoro, which means heart. Quiz time, say the reading of the following kanji. Machi awase, jakuten, kokoro, 勉強弟 Now say the meaning of the following words. Teimai Younger siblings 中心 Center 期待 Expectation 弱い Weak, 強い Strong. We are done for today. Thank you so much for watching. 見てくれてありがとうございます。それでは、ドロン。Hi everyone. Welcome to Kanji Time. Today we are going to learn N2 Kanji. Let's go. If you want to do the quiz first, please go to this time. This kanji means include, take, wrap, persuade. The on reading for this kanji is gan, like in gan yu, meaning inclusion. And the kun reading is fuku, like in fukumi warai, meaning chako. <laughs> this kanji means periphery, circumference, circuit, lap, everywhere. The on reading for this kanji is shu. Like in, 世界一周 meaning around the world. 世界一周旅行の旅に出る And the kun reading is, 回 Like in, 回りを見る Meaning to see around. This kanji means bloom, laugh. Kun reading is, sa Like in, 早咲き Which means, early flowering. And, osozaki, meaning late flowering. Osozaki no kashu.
はあ、遅咲きです。<笑> This kanji means virtuous, good, goodness, get along. The o n r e a d i n g for this kanji is 善 like in 善意 meaning goodwill. On the train, ガタンゴトン、ガタンゴトン。あ、どうぞこちらのお席、座ってください。あ、すいません。あ、そうですか、道が知りたいんですかあ、じゃあついてきてください、教えます。And the kun reading is yo. Like in yo y o k o n a i meaning virtue. This kanji means consume, eat, drink, smoke, receive. The on reading for this kanji is kits. Like in kisaten, meaning cafe. And kitsuen jo, meaning smoking area. Quiz time. Say the reading of the following kanji. Hayazaki. 含み笑い。世界一周。良い行い。喫茶店。Now say the meaning of the following words. 含有。Inclusion. 喫煙所。スモーキングエリア。遅咲き。late flowering. 周りを見る。to see around. 善意。good will. 世界一周旅行行きたいな。船に乗ってゆく。あ !Thank you so much for watching! 見てくれてどうもありがとうございます。皆さん良い行いはしていますかこんな世の中だからこそいいこと自分から発信していけるといいですねはいそれでは See you next time バイバイ Hi everyone Welcome to 漢字タイム今日は N2 漢字を勉強しましょう Let's go If you want to do the quiz first Please go to this times This 漢字 means manage occupation perform Conduct business. Plan. The on reading for this kanji is A. Like in, 営業時間 which means business hours. And the k u n reading is 営、like in, 営む meaning to run, manage, keep. This kanji means utensil, implement, instrument, container, ability. The on reading for this kanji is ki, like in, 受話器 Meaning, telephone receiver. プルルルンプルルンはい、もしもし。はい、はい。And the kun reading is, 器。Like in, 器が大きい。Which means, a person of high caliber. 器が大きい、器が大きい。器が小さい人。おい、なんだよ、やめろよ。おい。もう。器が大きい人。大丈夫だよ。うんうん。Mm. This kanji means group, round, association, lamp, mass. The on reading for this kanji is dan. Like in, gekidan. Meaning theatrical group. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I love ya, tomorrow. Gekidan, shudan. Na 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 na, which means group. This kanji means surround, besiege, enclose, encircle, fence. The on reading for this kanji is i, like in, funiki, meaning atmosphere and ambience. i, funiki. And the k u n reading is kako, like in, kakoi wo suru, meaning to enclose. This kanji means solid, firm, hardened, clot, stubborn. The on reading for this kanji is ko, like in, kuchi, kote suru, meaning fixing. And the kun reading is kata, like in, katameru, which means to fix, firm, harden. Kami no ki o katameru. Kuching! Shhh! Quiz time! Say the reading of the following kanji. 
固める。器が大きい。劇団。営む。雰囲気 Now say the meaning of the following words. 囲いをする To enclose. 集団 Group. 受話器 Telephone receiver. 固定 Fixing. 営業時間 Business hours. 今日の漢字タイムは以上です。見てくれて本当にいつもどうもありがとうございます。それではまた See you next time. もしチャンネルを気に入っていただけたら登録してもらえると嬉しいです。And don't forget to like! あ、もしもしあ、はいはい、わかりました。いきます。バイ !Hey everyone, welcome to the monthly review, the monthly show on language learning. Where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is how to adjust your routine and learn language from home. Many of us are spending more and more time at home. So, how do you make the best of this time and learn your target language? Learning at home can be tough with all the distractions. And in this episode, you're going to discover the pros and cons of learning at home and how to successfully learn from home without getting distracted. How to adjust your routine and learn language from home. Recently, many people have started to work and take classes from home. With language learning, since it's something people do in their own time, a lot of it is done at home anyway. But that doesn't mean that all of this hasn't affected how people learn. If you used a language learning app or listen to lessons during your commute, but you don't commute anymore, the pandemic has probably ruined your flow. With many of us spending more time at home, being able to learn from home efficiently is a good skill to have. Because while learning or working from home sounds good, it's not exactly easy to do. Part 1 The Pros and Cons of Learning at Home. First, the pros. There's convenience. You can learn whenever you want. You also have more time in the day since you're not commuting or walking from the train station into work. It's also easier to practice speaking. Many people might find it hard to practice on the train or at a lunch break or in the office during work. It might sound a little strange, but at home, you can dedicate more time to practicing speaking. What's your favorite pro of learning at home? Leave us a comment. Now, what about the cons? Distractions. There are a lot more distractions at home. There's the TV, there's the couch, and the food, and family members coming in and out. Next, there's no physical or mental separation between rest and work, which is crucial for focus. It's the same reason why people prefer going to the gym instead of working out from the comfort of their own home. If you're in a place where there's only one goal, like working out, and you're surrounded by people working out, you'll have no problem doing it. But if you're in a place you associate with rest, eating, and watching TV, you might have trouble focusing. But if you're spending more time at home, then you should at least make the best of it and learn your language at home. Part two how to successfully learn from home without getting distracted. So here's how you do it first, pick a dedicated place for learning. And preferably not your bed. Just like an office is associated with working time and your bedroom is associated with rest, you need a place associated with language learning. It could be your desk in the corner of the room, it could be your basement, as long as it's far from distractions and places of rest. Second, pick a time. That way, for example, when it's 9 p.m., you know it's time to put in 10 minutes of language learning. Three, time box your study sessions. What's time boxing? Time boxing is simply setting a fixed amount of time for an activity. For example, you're going to dedicate the next 10 minutes to language and nothing else. If you usually have trouble concentrating, time boxing is a good way to set boundaries and get things done. 
four, start small. Just like with setting small, measurable goals and realistic routines, don't set aside two hours for study time. Instead, try to time box five, 10, or 15 minutes and stick with that for a week or two. You can always increase your time later once you get more comfortable with your routine. Five, do multiple sessions in one day. Instead of trying to master a lesson and the lesson dialogue in one shot, space out your learning throughout the day, in the morning, afternoon, and at night. So take an audio or video lesson and read along with the lesson notes in the morning. You'll get acquainted with the conversation, all the words, and grammar rules. Don't rush to memorize it all. You'll come back to it later in the day. And do this for around five to 15 minutes. During the day, practice shadowing the dialogue. Practice recalling the words. Do this for around 10 minutes. You can also write out the lesson dialogue, practice using the grammar rules, or drill the words with flashcards. And at night, come back and review for about 10 minutes. You can re-listen to the lesson or just the dialogue track. By doing multiple sessions in one day, you'll be a lot more comfortable with the language, simply because you spaced out your learning and came back to review. And while it may feel repetitive, it's the repetition that helps you master the language over the long term. Six, use at-home time to practice speaking more. It would be hard to practice if you were commuting or out on a walk, but if you're at home, you can easily speak out loud without drawing attention or feeling embarrassed. So to recap, one, pick a specific place for learning that's far from distractions like your bed. Two, pick a specific time for studying. Three, time box your study sessions. Four, start small. Five, do multiple sessions in one day. And six, use at-home time to practice speaking more. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time we'll talk about the power of learning a language with someone else. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. There are a lot of people working to learn another language, but there are also a lot of people who grew up speaking two or more languages without even thinking about it. If you're able to speak two languages, you're bilingual. If you can speak more, you're multilingual. In many countries, being bilingual or multilingual is normal or even expected. But in some countries, people grow up speaking and learning one language. If you speak one language, you're monolingual. So what can monolinguals learn from bilinguals or multilinguals? This video will look at what it's like to be comfortable in two or more languages. Here are six pieces of information relating to bilingualism and multilingualism that you can use in your language learning. First, bilingualism and the brain. How does being bilingual or multilingual affect the brain? Do you dream in both languages? Do you see subtitles in your head for the other language as somebody's talking? The answers to questions like these are different for everyone. Some people may dream mostly in the language they're most comfortable with, and occasionally in another language. Some people may be able to effortlessly move between the languages they know, while others may get stuck from time to time. These are all normal parts of knowing more than one language. People who were exposed to another language since birth may have certain advantages in language acquisition over monolinguals. They may already be familiar with certain sounds and sound combinations that monolinguals are not familiar with. As a language learner, you're probably quite familiar with this. If you've already mastered a language and have decided to start learning a new one, you're probably going to unconsciously make connections to words in different languages. You'll think to yourself, this word has the same vowel sound as another word I know, so it should sound pretty similar. When it comes to studying things like new vocabulary words and grammar, however, monolinguals, bilinguals, and multilinguals all need to spend time learning and memorizing. So in your own learning, don't be discouraged by people who speak your native language and your target language. They may have had a totally different learning experience than you. Consider your language studies, not language abilities. Second, language mistakes and confusion. You may be wondering if bilinguals ever confuse languages in their heads. Generally, people who are fluent in multiple languages can separate the languages mentally. 
However, there are situations where people momentarily forget words, even in our native languages, or we think of a word in one language but not in another. In some cases, we might even want to use a word that exists in one language but not in the other. An interesting concept from academic literature on this topic is perfect bilingualism. It's the idea that someone can speak two languages perfectly at an equally high level. Many people assume that someone who grew up speaking two languages would be able to use both of them perfectly and sound flawless, but this is generally not true. Bilingual people are often more comfortable talking about certain topics in specific languages. There are also situations where bilingual people may pronounce words with a slightly different accent than monolingual people. Interestingly enough, there's also a similar pattern among bilingual couples. Bilingual couples usually have a single dominant language. Even if they can speak another language with fluency and ease, people will usually use the language that's most efficient and comfortable. Third, bilingual societies. Can you imagine a place where you talk to your family in one language, your neighbors in another, your boss in a third, and write letters in a fourth? This might sound like a dream for many language enthusiasts, but in some societies, it's normal. This type of multilingual society occurs on border regions all throughout the world. In northern Iraq, for instance, people usually speak Kurdish, Turkish, and Iraqi Arabic, and many of them use modern standard Arabic and English at school. In some parts of China, people might learn English at school, speak their city's dialect of Mandarin when out shopping, speak standard Mandarin at work, and perhaps even speak another language when at home with their families. Some of these people might even say they're bad at languages. When people say this, it's often because they grew up using these languages, not learning them in school. When they were using a language at a friend's house and got their pronunciation corrected, there was no anxiety involved. This kind of learning is different than learning in a school setting, where tests and classrooms can cause pressure and discomfort. Media exposure plays a huge role, too. Many people around the world are functionally bilingual in English, thanks to TV and YouTube. Sometimes parents, even in societies where people speak several languages, will put on educational English videos for kids to watch. But what's even more fun is something that's enjoyable for the kids that's already in English. You can do this too, as an adult language learner. There's a time and a place for coursework, but if you're able to shut off the learning part of your brain and simply absorb content you're interested in, you'll be surprised at what you can pick up after a couple of months. Fourth, heritage languages. You might know someone from an immigrant family who speaks a different language at home than they do with everybody else. That language is referred to academically as a heritage language. Basically, a language that someone learned at home without using it very much anywhere else. You can imagine that such an arrangement would produce huge variation in language ability. Some people have heritage languages that they learn from visiting their grandparents once a week. Others learn through rigorous homeschooling routines enforced by their parents. Heritage learners often have some marked differences in their speech compared to speakers who grew up in a monolingual environment. They might have an accent that's affected by the dominant language they grew up with or they might feel uncomfortable using some grammar or vocabulary that they're not as familiar with. But on the other hand, they might be able to smoothly use things like tone, grammatical gender, and other aspects of language that are extremely difficult for learners to master. Their listening comprehension is also likely good. Another big difference is in reading and writing. You probably don't remember, but reading and writing took time to learn. It may be difficult to motivate yourself or a child to learn to read or write in a new language, especially if that language has a different and complicated script. We may be tempted to rely on the reading and writing skills we already have instead of learning something new. If you have a heritage language and you're working on reactivating it, be kind to yourself. Maybe you feel like you should know how to read or write in your heritage language, but you don't. And that's okay. You can work on building those skills as any other language learner would. A great way to build literacy is to read text with audio that you can listen to at the same time. You can use the lesson notes from our language learning program or watch videos with subtitles. This is easy to do from the comfort of your home. Fifth, gaining fluency in a second language. There's a lot of divided discussion about whether it's possible to learn a language to a native level. It's important to consider what native level means. Maybe a native speaker of your target language can talk about their work flawlessly, but they can't speak in depth about a topic beyond their field. 
you don't expect yourself to be able to talk about absolutely everything with 100% perfection in your native language, so don't expect that you'll magically be able to communicate perfectly in the language you're learning, either. Moreover, it's important to remember that nobody speaks flawlessly all the time. We all make mistakes, and we know how to correct ourselves and clarify information. The best speakers in the world make mistakes, even on stage. Everybody's stumbled over their words before. Does that mean they're not fluent in their own language? Of course not. You can do some amazing things to get a native-like accent in a foreign language, but they all take a great deal of work. Lots of people convince others that they're native speakers for the first few minutes of conversation. Does it really matter if you end up making mistakes after 40 seconds, 40 minutes? Remember, the perfect speech is not required to speak like a native. As we've talked about in this video, lots of bilingual and multilingual people have strengths and weaknesses too. Sixth, can a bilingual person forget a language? Language skills can deteriorate over time if they're not used. If you're very busy with one language and rarely use the other, you might see a drop in your abilities in the language you don't use as often. Completely forgetting a language takes a very long time, though. While you might forget a word here and there in one language, you likely won't lose a language completely unless you don't use it for decades. This is something to think about for anyone who is considering spending their life in another country. Make sure to keep your language skills up. Otherwise, as time goes on, things may be harder and harder to remember. Being bilingual or multilingual is pretty interesting. A lot of language learners compare themselves to bilinguals or multilinguals. Remember that bilingual and multilingual people put in work too, when they were kids. So don't feel discouraged if it seems like your own learning is slow. It simply takes time, and that's true for everyone. For even more tips and information related to language learning, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! If a native speaker of your target language spoke to you, how much of their speech do you think you could understand? Your answer, of course, depends a lot on your vocabulary skills. In this video, we're going to cover five tips for memorizing vocabulary quickly. When you learn new vocabulary words, you increase your skills in reading, writing, listening, and speaking. As you learn a language, you gain the ability to recognize vocabulary words and learn when to use them. It's important to have a vocabulary that covers a range of topics so that you can understand important announcements, safety information, conversations between friends, and posts on social media. In this video, we're going to talk about why vocabulary is important, some features and the tools we offer that help you focus on memorizing, and some tips for memorizing words faster. Throughout this video, remember that consistency is a key component to memorization. If you haven't done this already, consider adding a number of vocabulary words you'd like to master to your monthly language goals. Okay, let's get to our tips. First, master our core word lists. We offer 11 core word lists. These lists are made up of the most common words in your target language. The 100 core word list is the best list for absolute beginners. After you master that list, you can move on to the other lists in the series. The 2000 core word list is a combination of all of the lists plus an additional 1000 words. Having knowledge of about 2000 vocabulary words in your target language will set you up for success. Knowing a variety of words in your target language is important because it allows you to speak about and understand many different topics. While grammar is certainly important, having the vocabulary you need to go about daily life, study, or make plans is essential. So, how do you use the core word lists with our flashcard feature? Our flashcard tool can display the vocabulary word, show a picture in translation, and play an audio recording of the vocabulary. You'll work on improving your recognition, production, and listening comprehension skills. Using a tool like this helps you associate new words with images. You also get to hear pronunciation and pitch accents from native speakers. You have the ability to choose how many new cards you'd like to learn daily. By the way, using the 2000 core word list isn't the only way to review all key vocabulary words. You can also merge your preferred lists. If you lack confidence in speaking, studying vocabulary can help you. 
If you master the most common words in your target language, speaking will become a bit easier. Among our core word lists are popular topics relating to hobbies, nature, food, and recreation. If you need some help making sentences with your new vocabulary, you can take a look at the core word list example sentences for ideas. These are all steps you can take to improve your speaking confidence. Second, create your own sentences. Creating your own sentences is a great way to work on memorizing new vocabulary. You can create sentences related to your daily life so that you can easily remember the sentences and use them. You can also try creating sentences you think you're likely to need before a conversation with a native speaker. In addition to our core word lists, we also have a dictionary feature. If you need help finding a certain vocabulary word, you can search for it in our dictionary. The dictionary includes audio from native speakers, so you can hear how the word is pronounced naturally and at a slower speed. With a premium membership, you'll have access to your own personal word bank. You'll be able to add words from the dictionary and our lessons to this word bank and study them using flashcards. Another thing that can help you with memorization is reading along with lesson dialogues and listening to the host's explanations. When you find a sentence that stands out, or when you make a sentence you think will be useful, make sure to actually use the sentence. Your memory will go stronger and stronger as you review sentences and practice saying them from memory. Third, read every day. How often do you read in your target language? Reading is a fun activity that can motivate you to spend some time studying new vocabulary. When you read, you encounter words you've seen in lessons, but you also find new words. Apart from reading for fun, our language learning program offers reading comprehension pathways for all levels. These pathways feature video lessons with vocabulary you're likely to see in real life. For example, an advanced pathway might include lessons for understanding promotional information, medical instructions, and directions. These pathways are designed to test your ability to recognize words. Another way to memorize words fast is by learning songs in your target language. If you're studying a language with sounds that are very different from your first language, this can be a really helpful tactic. You can make a monthly goal to memorize one to three songs you like in your target language. You can find the lyrics to the song with a search online, and you can search for a translation as well. As you listen to the song, read the lyrics. This can help you connect the sounds you're hearing with the characters or the letters you're reading. And remember, the songs can be from anywhere. It could be a kid's song, a new pop song, or a TV show theme. You can choose. The key is to find a fun way to read every day. This will help you improve your vocabulary. Fourth, test your listening skills. Test your listening skills with our listening comprehension pathways. Each of the pathways presents a conversation, asks a question, and then gives a breakdown. In our audio lessons, the hosts break down the dialogue by talking about the usage of key vocabulary and phrases. They also explain the grammar. After you listen to the breakdown, the dialogue is easier to understand. Make sure to re-listen to the lesson dialogues to review these important concepts. Another way to use our site for listening comprehension is by changing the flashcard settings. With our flashcards, you have the option to focus on building listening comprehension. If you choose this setting, the front of your flashcard will play an audio clip, and the back will show the answer. Additionally, if you're a Premium Plus member, you can practice listening with your native speaker teacher. You can request audio responses from your teacher instead of text. If you understand their message, you can respond with an audio file of your own, or with text. If you don't fully understand, you can ask your teacher for help. One more thing you can do is use TV shows to practice listening. You can choose a segment of a show to practice. Watch it once with subtitles, then once without subtitles. Determine how much you can comprehend, then look up the words you don't know. Fifth, take vocabulary quizzes. There are many ways to test yourself with vocabulary quizzes. Each of our lessons includes a vocabulary slideshow and quizzes that you can use for review. We also have video vocab pathways, which introduce new vocabulary based on certain themes, and they include pictures. You can also try making your own written tests with our flashcard feature. Change the flashcard settings according to your preferences. You can choose between recognition, production, and listening comprehension card types. Based on the card type you chose, write down either the vocabulary word or its translation when the card appears. Check your answers and give yourself a score for your study session. Writing vocabulary by hand is another great way to work on memorizing words. 
Earlier, we talked about learning vocabulary with songs. A fun and effective way to test your vocabulary and writing skills is to fill in the blanks. Copy and paste the lyrics of a song into a document and replace some of the words with blanks. Test your knowledge of the lyrics by filling in the blanks with the correct words. You can make it a little easier by including a word box, a list of vocabulary to use somewhere in the song. You can also do this with dialogues you want to practice from TV shows. To make sure you get all of the tools mentioned in this video, subscribe to our premium plan. You'll get access to all of our resources, including the core word lists and the flashcard tool. So to recap, in this video, we talked about five tips for memorizing new words. They were master our core word lists, create your own sentences, read every day, test your listening skills, and take vocabulary quizzes. These tips are fun and effective ways to help you reach your vocabulary goals a bit faster. If you want to go the extra mile, subscribe to Premium Plus to get access to your own native teacher. What are your vocabulary goals? How will you achieve them? Share your answers in the comment section below. And for even more tips on how to remember vocabulary fast, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Consistent hard work is one of the biggest factors that determine someone's success, and it's true for language learning too. While it's important to choose a course and study method that's right for you, at the end of the day, the results you see are a product of the effort you put in. However, the quantity of time spent studying a new language doesn't necessarily determine the quality of your study. Spending three hours a day watching movies doesn't help you learn much if you're not actively engaging with the language. In this video, we'll talk about how to actively engage your mind while studying. Number one. Think of your brain as a muscle. You might be familiar with the phrase, feel the burn, or maybe no pain, no gain. If you've been to your local gym recently, there's a chance you might have heard one of these phrases or seen something similar on a poster on a wall. In the world of sports and workouts, there's a common idea that the discomfort you feel when running, lifting weights, or doing some other physical activity is what brings results. The discomfort you feel is your muscles being pushed to their limit. It's the limit pushing that strengthens your muscles so that over time your performance increases. In the context of language learning, it's helpful to think of your brain as a muscle being trained. Just as we need to push against our physical limits when exercising, we also need to push our mental ones when learning a foreign language. Have you ever studied or practiced your target language in a way that left you tired or even exhausted? If so, you've experienced what it's like to push your brain out of its linguistic comfort zone. Number two, practice active listening. One of the easiest ways to push your language skills is to practice active listening. Active listening is when you listen to spoken language and do your best to understand what you hear. The best way to accomplish this is by using audio that you can't completely understand on the first listen. Preferably, you want to use audio that has subtitles or transcripts in your target language for you to double check your understanding after you listen to it. You can use movies, YouTube clips, or our lessons. During this exercise, you might feel like you're able to pick out only a few words here and there. During this practice session, you should listen to the audio several times. The first time around, it's okay if no words or just a few words stick out to you. Simply make a mental note of any words or sounds you recognize. The second time you listen, you're likely to recognize a little more than you did the previous time. Expect similar results with your third or even fourth time listening. When you reach a point where you can't understand any more words, go ahead and look at the subtitles or transcripts. Listen to the audio again and read along with the text. Odds are that you'll see words in the text you know, but didn't hear correctly. You're also likely to encounter words that are new to you completely. As you play back the audio and read along, try to guess what these words mean from the context of the words around them. After you've read along a couple times, look up the unfamiliar words in a dictionary or translator app. This active listening exercise routine is a great way to increase your listening and comprehension skills while picking up some new vocabulary along the way. It also allows you to learn new words in context, which itself is a powerful way to help you retain what you study. Number three, practicing with native speakers. 
Practicing with native speakers is the best way to push your language skills. Using what you've studied to communicate in real time is how you'll really challenge yourself. Try to connect with a native speaker on a weekly basis. Remember, consistency is important when you're learning a foreign language. If you live in a large metropolitan area, then there's a chance that there are some local native speakers nearby. Try visiting a local language exchange or meetup group to make the necessary connections. If you're unable to find a practice partner locally, then you can take your search online. There are a number of sites that help you find and connect with other language learners from around the world. For example, if you're a native English speaker learning a new language, you can find a native speaker of your target language who is learning English. There are tons of language learners around the world who have learned or are learning a second language. You're likely to find someone who knows your target language and is looking to improve his or her English. Learning a new language isn't always easy, but it's the discomfort that comes with pushing your ability in the language that produces results in your studies. Don't be afraid to step outside of your comfort zone. It's okay to move far outside of your native language. You'll expand your mind and your skills. Also remember that language learning is in every way a lot like an adventure. There will be fun times and times when it feels like you're swimming upstream. It's by keeping your head up through these ups and downs that you will experience the satisfaction that comes with learning a foreign language. Keep moving ahead. And for even more tips on how to engage better in your language learning, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Great work. Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description.